My name's Kelly Rose. I'm a geologist by training, but I'm basically a geodata scientist. I grew up in East Lansing, which is Michigan. It's flat as a pancake. There's not much geology at the surface. One of my earliest memories of science is that I had a rock collection from the time I was two years old. My mom and dad would say every day we'd go out to get the mail, and every day I would bring back a rock and put it in the closet. And it sort of evolved from there. I had amazing teachers throughout primary education. My fifth grade teacher, he taught us ornithology, ichthyology, botany, and as well as, as human history. And, and then my sixth grade teacher got us into earth science. And that evolved when I was in high school. I went to limnology camp. So my career path actually took a couple different turns. I went to college first in Ohio, then in Virginia at Virginia Tech then went and worked in the, the industry, the energy industry for a little bit before coming back into research. While I was working here full-time at DOE, I finished my PhD at Oregon State University. The hardest question that I get is, what do you do? Because geologists are very multidisciplinary just by the nature of geology. There's a little bit of biology, there's a little bit of physics, math, chemistry, social science, earth science. It blends it all together. In this modern era, over the last decade or so, as computing has become more and more robust, there's these huge opportunities to, con to blend conventional geology with other disciplines, statistics, applied mathematics, and computing science. The term geodata science that we coined is basically just saying we're doing this within the context of time and space. The team and I, we do research in a lot of different areas and it's ever growing. There's increasing need to understand complex multivariate, multi-component systems in relation to things like induced seismicity. Induced seismicity is man-made earthquakes. As we continue to, to engineer the planet at the surface and below the surface, we're actually causing a geologic phenomenon known as an earthquake, only it's man-made. And we can use spatial and data science methods combined with geologic knowledge to forecast and improve prediction of where you might have those types of earthquakes. The same with carbon storage, groundwater prediction for, for water resource analysis, geothermal energy resources or more conventional oil, gas, rare earth element and coal resources. And data science and geologic methods and tools can be used to help improve finding of those resources, quantifying how much is there, understanding their variability because they're not the same everywhere and basically just improving how we how we interact with the planet so that we're doing it in a you know safe environmentally appropriate and economically responsible way I love the opportunity to innovate there's almost a wild west feel right now particularly with data analytics using advanced technology there isn't an existing roadmap for the the problems that we're trying to to solve you know, we're not applying known solutions, we're actually coming up with what those solutions are. So technology is actually a really big component of why we can have this geo data science realm now. Even a decade ago or two decades ago, the ability to pull together millions or billions of data points, it was all but impossible. And now do it in a matter of days, months, you know, is, is, is really fun. Just because you're a scientist, that's not your only identity. You know, when I was growing up, I did music, I did dance. Science is one facet. As a geologist, we have to be able to think abstractly and artistically because we're constantly trying to visualize things in three dimensions or even four dimensions when you pull the time component in. You know, geology and geodata science is a science, but it relies and builds off of human thinking and culture, you know, and that's, that's where composition and, you know, art and dance and music, they all blend together to help you become a more robust person and a more robust scientist. I think the biggest thing that I've learned is, you know, things don't always come easy. And so learning to persevere and learning to, you know, accept that sometimes you hit a dead end or sometimes you need to ask for help. There's always a nugget of, of something good in a question, so ask it.